is nothing. Only warm, primordial blackness. Your conscious ferments in it. No larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Ever. Never, ever. Never, ever, ever, baby. And an audience amount of time passes. It is utterly void of struggle. No ex-wives are contained within it. An awareness creeps up on you. A mass lies hidden in your dead angle. Soaking in some lurid acidic sauce, it's bloated and shameful. A ball of meat surrounding you. This is a terrible line of questioning, and it will only lead to more awareness of the meat thing. Ex love, ex tenderness. It is foolish of you to resurface to the loss. Not after all the damage you've suffered to get here. Some of it irreversible. Stay. Sail with me through the abyss of pelagic zone. Do you really? Nothing town to fuck all, Borough. Do you want me to upgrade that to a one-way trip, sir? The song of death is sweet and endless. But what is this? Somewhere in the sword? Bloated man meet around you. As like a fly to the ointment, your conscience sticks to it. The limbed and headed machine of pain and undignified suffering is firing up again. It wants to walk the desert, hurting, longing, dancing to disco music. The stench of liquor rises from your mouth, and with it, an ungodly headache. A fiery streak penetrates your skull, trying to force your eyes open. It's a sound, a clarion call from hell. Somehow, you know what it is. A caprice to name a motor carriage. This fan has two chain pull switches. One ends in a tiny fan, the other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie has somehow attached itself to one of the blades. You reach out to grab the tie, but what's this? Diffuse, radiating chest pain. Doom comes over you. This is bad. Feels like sharp stones grinding in your chest and keeping you from moving. 
for quite a long time. Still ongoing. Now is a good time to start worrying. Finally, the pressure recedes. You find yourself covered in cold sweat and trying not to move, hoping it will keep you from dying. You know what you should do. You should stop the fan and then try again. It'll get easier. Do it if you want to die. The stabbing pain in your chest is telling you. You're hanging by a thread here. The blades come squeaking to a halt. It should be easier to reach the tie now. You swoop up and catch the tie. Snap. It's released from the blade. What you have in your hand is a truly hideous thick tie with four or five different patterns. The knot reminds you of a noose. A terrible mistake. Turn the lights off immediately. You can, the lights are off. You hear a jingle. Keys are clinking in the pocket of your flare cut pants. It says whirling in rags on the aluminium key ring. There is a single key on the ring. The number one is etched on it. It should open the door. The whirling in rags is a hostel cafeteria on the urban coast, frequented by dock workers. A mirror hangs above a bent and broken sink. In a fierce discharge of masculine energy, someone has ripped half the faucet off. Was this not the same Elo that founds empires and lays waste to cities, virile, uncaring towards the little things? Probably not, no. Hot water sprays from the faucet's base and steam covers the mirror. You cannot see yourself, just a vague impression of a man. Suddenly, you realize you have no memory of the face that awaits you there, underneath the soft vapor. As you slowly reach your hand towards the surface of the mirror. Abort, you clearly have not thought this through. You won't like what you see there, and you will never unbecome it. Yeah, there is definitely something wrong with it. Where to even begin? There is the bloatedness, then the swollenness. It's like there's an upholstery of alcohol underneath your skin. It's not. It's swollen and snail-like, wriggling between your fingers. Bet you are. Your nose feels like a small balloon in the middle of your face. It hurts when you honk it. It doesn't appear to be a particularly tiny nose either. Not with all the drinks it's absorbed for you. Behold. You have no idea who this thing is, do you? It appears you're also dead. There's clearly rigor mortis on your face. Oh wait. Is that an expression? Are you trying to make an expression with that face? Why? Please stop. It's horrible. You're scaring yourself. You can't, can you? It's like it's not even voluntary anymore. You have worn that grin into your face and now it won't come off. What does it even mean? What is the emotion you're trying to convey?
Please promise yourself you are not going to try it on any of the ladies, whatever happens. You liar. You can't even tell the truth to yourself. Go ahead. Try something. Like the rest of you, it comes from a bad place somewhere in the past. That's all you know for now. It's too late. Like an image on film, the expression belongs to your primary motor cortex. It would take a minor neurological miracle for you to cease producing it. The window stands broken in its frame. Cold wind blows in. The morning light hurts your eyes. It's hazy, but you see the ocean and some war-torn buildings. The shards face outward. Whatever broke this window came from the inside. A fine web of scarring covers the back of your right hand, but none of it is recent. More likely a projectile than a held object. There are no fragments on the floor from pulling a tool back in after impact. It is too large for a bullet, yet too small for a piece of furniture. You're looking for something heavy and larger than your fist. Like the green shoe that's on the hat rack in the corner, which, coincidentally, is missing its friend. Congratulations. You smashed the window with your own shoe. Now you only have one. If you're lucky, you can still find the other on the balcony outside. The door to it should be outside your room. You mean someone else took your shoe off and smashed the window with it? This person also forced the drinks on you. The cool wind gushes in. Your toes curl up from the cold. There they both are, two identical shoes, both copiously green and indiscriminately snakeskin, reunited on your feet, like two baby crocodiles. Good, they're balanced, comfy, feels like the only good thing about you right now, truth be told.
Hello, officer. The young woman raises a cigarette to her lips. Her eyes are brown and her face is speckled with birthmarks. She can't be more than 28. A silver jumpsuit falls off her like scale armor, sparkling. This is the sparkle of too many nights out on the city. Uh, no. The young woman shakes her head slowly. Officer could be an artistic statement. You're already prone to those. No, you're a police officer, sir. Okay, cool. I won't. First, I have to ask, are you okay, sir? You look like you're about to throw up. Can I bring you something? She's right. Something wants to come out through your mouth, right in front of her, right here. It makes you put your hand on your stomach and swallow. Sir, you've been here for three days. On official police business, no less. Couldn't say. In truth, so far, mostly drinking. You have no doubt about the drinking. But do you strike yourself as a tight-lipped drunk? She must have heard something. The words have already left your mouth. <laughs> what was that? That's not even how words are used. What did you say? Come on, say it again. <laughs> no, you see, that's not what you said. You said... <laughs> Come on, man. Freddy, please. One more time. <laughs> Goddamn right you did. You crazy asshole, you. What kind of cup are you? Don't be. It was funny. And anyway, who gives a shit? Who gives a shit about any of it? So what if you can't pull grade-A pussy anymore? There are other things in life. More meaningful, more fitting for a man your age. This. This is Fata Morgana. One thing, though. It's gonna suck for you later when you have to interrogate me. And for the record, no, I didn't do it. The door is closed. There is no answer. You hear the shower being turned on somewhere inside. This door can only be opened with a key or from the inside.
You should totally sing karaoke here, the first chance you get. Your emotions need to be expressed. People need to know your vast oceanic soul. Of course, at this point, precise measurements of your soul can only be performed from the outside. It needs to be heard. Through a PA system. By other people. You should sing the sad small church song from that tape you found. Thought it was obvious. Serves them right. Wipe that smirk off their face with your sad, tragic song. Who's laughing now? No one. You would need another copy of the tape first though. The one upstairs is destroyed. Who is mistakenly identified as a cop for his prominent jawline? Yes, sounds likely. You should probably go on stage and pose for a moment when you're done with this thought. See if it works. Who is mistakenly identified as a cop for his prominent jawline? Yes, sounds likely. You should probably go on stage and pose for a moment when you're done with this thought. See if it works. A man in his late twenties stands behind the counter, inspecting a stuffed seabird. As you approach, he gives you a sideways glance, then looks down again. Everything is cool between you and this guy. He's a big fan. Make some small talk. A competent work of taxidermy, the white and brown seabird lies among piles of coasters and drying mugs. One of its wings broken. The man is trying to mend it. Looks like the bird was ripped off the shield that was used to mount it, most likely on a wall. This is the great skewer. The seabird is the symbol for the discovery of the Insulindian Isola, the part of the world you are in right now. The small steel tag says as much. The great skewer. Stair skewer. Look, your buddy is over there. Why don't you go and talk to him, okay? He pretends not to hear you, concentrating on the bird instead. A competent work of taxidermy. The white and brown looks like the bird was ripped off the... This is the great... The small steel tag says as much. Look. Your buddy, why don't you go and talk to him? Uh, he pretends not to hear you. No, I'm not the bartender. I He's very animated all of a sudden. This seems like a touchy subject. That period of my life is over. Not everyone who stands behind a counter is a bartender, okay? I'm the cafeteria manager. I have three cafeterias to manage. Three, Sylvie tends the bar here, not me. I'm only standing in. She just, you know. His eyes dart from left to right. This man isn't lying, but he is hiding something. So now you're a cop. Oh, forget it. Hello, sweetie. 
You shouldn't keep your colleague waiting. A spectacled man in an orange bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. Looks like he's waiting for someone. You. As you approach, he narrows his eyes and extends his hand in greeting. On the sleeve of his bomber jacket, as well as on its back, are the same enigmatic white rectangles as on your blazer. Hello. I'm Kim Kitsuragi, Lieutenant, Precinct 57. You must be from the 41st. You realize he's waiting for your name. Raphael Ambrosius Custo. No, you won't. Raphael Ambrosius Custo is one classy name, and you're one classy cop. Say it. Yes, well. Not for a moment does he believe that's your real name. He casts it aside as an intradepartmental joke or a peculiarity he doesn't understand. It looks like we had a little scheduling error on Sunday. Saturday too, actually. Have you had time to talk to the manager here? What he means is, he has been trying to meet up with you for two days, but you have been otherwise occupied. If you don't mind, we should talk to him again. Ask him for a rundown of the area. Now that I'm here as well. I understand the scene is out back, right? It also wouldn't hurt to assure him the police are finally here. In full force, I mean. Have you mapped out the initial interviews? Good. But even if you haven't, we'll have time for that after we take a look at the coroner's case. Have you removed the dead body from the tree? Mm-hmm. 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 Sure, but did you take it down from the tree? So, the body is still in the tree, where it has been hanging for seven days straight. We should go there as soon as we are done talking to the owner. After you, officer. If you're about to embark on an investigation, shouldn't you have a badge? You mean you don't have a badge? Losing your identification card is a serious matter. My vehicle has a shortwave. You can use it to report your badge missing. I advise you to try to locate it as quickly as possible. But getting the body down should still take precedence. Lieutenant Kitsuragi is now in your party. You can talk to him whenever by interacting with him. The theme on that pinball machine is a standard royalist theme, used on everything from pinball cabinets to full flavor cigarettes. Clinging to a picture book version of the past century, waiting for the king to come back, and cast out all the profiteers and homosexuals. Basically, imagine a yellow plastic crown with a liquor brand emblazoned on it. It comes free with a six pack of Vermilion Roy d'Or. The words Roy d'Or are stamped into the crown's plastic. The sentiment is called Anti-centennial nostalgia, pining for a time before the turn of the century. It's common even now, after 50 years. The 
The man with the unimpressive beard notices you approaching. He drops the ledger he was holding and turns to the lieutenant. Mr. Gart, right? You Yes. I am Kim Kitsuragi from Prison 57. This is an inter-district investigation. So joining me from Prison 41... Fantastic. Right. Now, I know it took us a while to arrive at the scene. It also took you a while to call us and report the dead body. It was you who placed the call, yes? No, I only just got here. It was probably Sylvie who called you. She usually works the bar here. I'm only temporarily taking over her duties. Do you have her number? As a matter of fact, I do. This sounds like something you can use to call this Sylvie later. You said you just got here. From where? Are you a local? What, of Martinez? No, I live in Jamrock. I only sometimes come here to keep an eye on the place. This is just one of the many, many cafeterias I manage. But you still know your way around, yes? In case we need directions. Yes, I know where some things are, but as I said, I don't live here. I just used to work here. And I'm not going to start working here again, if that's what you think. I didn't imply that. Detective. He probably means this is where you step in and ask your questions. His face expresses profound doubt in your having this. Ask him about the body's location before asking if he killed him. People give up information in the more innocuous questions, which you can later use in the more sinister ones. Not vice versa. Behind this building, there's a courtyard. They hoisted him up on a tree there. That's easy. See that door there? First you exit through that. Then, to your right, you should see a big hole in the fence. A really big one. You can get to the courtyard through there. No need for the keys. The hole is big enough for the Franco-Nigerian cavalry to fit through. This man means the heavy cavalry of the innocence Franco Negro, sweeping over the plains and nations of the enemies of mankind, fifth century style. Unified currency and the concept of cool came in their wake. They wore lamella and carried guns. But first and foremost, Franco Nigerian heavy cavalry was really, really wide. That hole in the fence must be enormous. Haven't you asked me that already? What is it with you and this woman? She has nothing to do with this. Okay, you got me. She went away because of the dead body out back. And because I asked for her number. That's why Sylvie went away. I hope you appreciate that. Thank you. I asked an employee out. She didn't want to come, but felt obliged to. It was a bad idea. Now, what is so goddamn fascinating about that for you? It's got nothing to do with the lynching. What? What are you, a chauvinist then? Ha! He smiles until he realizes his comeback wasn't very good. Then he frowns again. I don't know who killed him. I'm not the police. That's your job. This is it. He said they hoisted him up on a tree. Who is this they if he doesn't know? Uh, oh. People are saying it was the Union dock workers, that it was a lynching. 
the locals, the customers, the people who eat here, a lot of dock workers eat here. Sylvie told me everyone knows the dock workers did it. Did the debarders themselves tell her this, or is it a rumor? I don't really know. You'll have to ask her. I would suppose it's because they have nothing better to do. You mean the strike? Yes, the strike. The man they hanged was a security guard for the harbor company, I hear. A mercenary. The unionists probably thought they'd send a message. What are you, crazy? Of course I didn't kill him! The lieutenant turns the page in the little notebook he's been scribbling in. Let's go. Not so fast, Mr. Feminist. You owe me 130 royale. As you blow this joint, behind you a whiny voice shouts. Real mature, man. Real mature. RCM in Martinez. What can I help you with? We don't see a lot of police around here, that's all. Of course. What can I help you with? Me? I am just a gardener. I am working. I have a greenhouse in the yard there. I've been trying to get some work done. Well, as you probably know, there's a corpse hanging from a tree there. It smells pretty bad, so I have to take breaks. Don't worry, miss. We are here to clean it up. You can get to work soon. Mm -hmm. Thank you. My head is about to explode from all the salts I've had to inhale. Salts? Ammonium salts, perhaps useful for later. Excuse me? Oh, well, I didn't write it there. I'm just sitting here. I don't know anything about that either. As I said, I didn't write it. Pig is a widely used term for members of the police. It's not loving. No need to worry. We are not saying you did. Okay. Well, I didn't. Since the street signs messed up? Okay. What do you need? It's there. In the yard, right through the hole in the fence. Even all the way over here, there's a drop of death in the spring air. What do you mean? We're in Martinez, sir. This intersection is called Roundabout North, I think. There's the pier, the Capeside apartment buildings, some more tenements, not a lot really. The harbor gates, some kind of commotion, I think. I don't follow the local politics. A fleet store too. Some shops and a bridge. The canal bridge leads to the coast, but it's broken, I think. Some kind of accident, probably. Just coast. There's a little fishing village there, and a fish market. But that got closed down ages ago. It's just water. No, actually, I think they call it the Martinez Inlet. There are some islands in the bay, but they're hard to reach. No problem. Of course, I won't hold you back. 
If there's a corpse, then you're going to need those gloves for the autopsy. Sure, keep them. I have another pair. Before you stands a motor carriage. The bodywork is covered in blue and white livery, bearing the number 57. Vapor emanates from the large engine on the back of the vehicle. It hasn't had time to cool off yet. This must be the infernal machine that tore you from oblivion. The Cupris Kinema motor carriage. In the cabin, you are welcomed by a set of steering levers, a radio microphone on a hook, a pull-out toolbox under the seat, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. A scent of leatherwork and heavy fuel oils washes over you. The frequency tableau lights up and a green button labeled Prime Line glows like a feline eye. And then you hear something. The soft purr of electrical kittens, radio waves cast far and wide over the metropolis. A woman's voice greets you through the static. This is Precinct 57. Hello, Lieutenant. How may I assist you? Hello, Alice. Please assist our colleague from the 41st Precinct here. I'm putting him on. Operating the radio is easy. Just be confident. You've probably done it a thousand times. This is Officer Alice Demetri, Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Under the green prime line, a yellow saved button catches your eye. You wonder what the lieutenant's default radio station is. Of course. What is the number, officer? Yes, hold on. Her number is... 005-1944-298 Received. Hold on, officer. Give it a minute. She might be busy at the moment. Takes a bit to get to the phone. Officer? I have Sylvie Malaika on the line for you. Yes, hello? Oh, right. Hello, officer. What can I do for you? Legally, no. In reality, yes. Martinez is de facto policed by the Dock Workers Union. Mm -hmm. I... I didn't want to get in trouble with the others. Push her further. Show her the error of her ways. The other people who live around here. Local people, I... I didn't want trouble. You don't live here. You don't understand. 
Squealing is frowned upon here. Everything is dealt with, well, by the Union, internally. Please, I just didn't want any trouble. I... I didn't know I had to report it. I... I thought someone would take him down eventually. Yes, I know. It's just... <sighs> Was there anything else? No, sorry. I don't. <clears throat> Not a lot of people have phones around here. Copper thieves take the wires. People don't have the money to have the cables put in again. They use the Union's phone, or the one on the coast. So the Union has a phone, and there's one further down the coast. Got it. It was someone else. We'll find them sooner or later, officer. It just might take a while. Yeah, go on. You mean, why did I leave the bar? Honestly, I'm... Not really comfortable discussing it with you, sir. Why not? What? No, why would you even think that? Bring Gar into this. It's none of your business. God, why can't you just mind your own business? She mutters. I already said I don't want to talk about this. You're messing everything up again. I do hope so. Please, don't call me again. Bye. No, she doesn't have a problem with you. It must be someone else she's angry about. Some other guy. Like Gart. You know women and their constant problems. Yak, yak, nag, nag. How's one supposed to get the love going like that? That's where you step in. Your Lieutenant Love. Matchmaker extraordinaire. Help the poor girl out. Lest she turns into a spinster. Oh yeah, my point exactly. You know how they are. Transactional and hysteric. Loony broads. You know what you've got to do. First, you've got to calm her down. Tell her you've got everything under control. Then go and have a little boy's talk with Gart himself. Think you can do that, Lieutenant Love? No. What? God, what is happening in your head? Oh, oh God. Please, just stay out of my life. What? What is it? Call was dominated by the other party. Anything else, officer? It's on. The love quest is on. Too late, everyone. It's on. Take it to Gart now. Just a second, officer. Ten two, ten five. This is forty first. Uh, come in. Over. The man uses relay code. You got this. You're a cop, and cops know relay code. Ten four message received. Ten five relay message. What's your status? Over. Ten eighteen. State your message, sir. Ten 
Ten Nine, over. Ten four, message received. This is a very serious situation. I need to ten twenty to the captain, over. Is it him? What does he want? Says he lost his badge and needs to report it. He what? He lost his badge? Who lost his badge? Dick fucking Mullen. Who do you think? It's Officer Dick Mullen from the bestseller Dick Mullen and the Lost Identity. Dick Mullen is not your name. It's the name of a fictional detective who would not lose his badge. Defend yourself. Immediately. They're laughing at you. He's asking you to stop. Says this is serious. Of course it's serious. He lost his fucking badge. Satellite officer Vic Mark conquers. Losing your badge is serious. Over. He says this has probably happened to other policemen before him and laughs sarcastically. Oh god damn it. Is he fucking kidding? The whole station's gonna be dicked for this. Satellite officer Vikmar is wondering if you might be joking and adds that this tarnishes the reputation of the entire station. Over. Mullen dicked us! 10 for I hear you, officer. I'm just going to make a note here that you are in pursuit of your misplaced badge. Over. Fuck me! Mac, come here! You've got to hear this! Dick Mullen lost his badge! What's going on? Super Cop here lost his badge. He lost his what now? His badge. He lost his goddamn fucking badge. He asks you to please stop saying he lost his badge. Why? Did he find it? Sergeant Parson was wondering if you found your badge yet. Over. Um, you don't have a comeback. Sorry. It's hard to think like this. He's not replying. Looks like he's still looking for it. 10-9, come again. I didn't get that. Over. New heights even for Captain Sober. Ask him. <laughs> Ask him if he's lost his gun, too. Sergeant Orson wants to know if you lost your gun, too. Over. Check your pockets. Check your... Holy fuck. You don't know where it is, do you? No. It's gone. It's not fucking on you. 10-9, come in, officer. Did you get my question? We were wondering about your gun. Over. Even before you can get the words out, everything gets scrambled in your brain. He says he didn't lose his gun, or his fun, whatever that means. Ask him to describe it. His gun. Not his fun. Just the gun will do. <laughs> Satellite officer McLean requests a description of your weapon. Over. It's a single shot kill A9. An armistice to be precise. Says it's a kill uh, 9mm armistice. Armistice? What, is he a fucking... Clearly he doesn't have his villier anymore. Dear God, he lost his gun? Oh, oh my, I can't. <laughs> this is a truly a laughing matter. Mac can face a giant of Coco Nur by himself, but this go in and him piss his pants. <laughs> oh, I, I can't. Fuck. He lost his... Ask him if he still got his wiener. <laughs> I'm not going to. Ask him. Uh, Sergeant Thorson here is wondering if you are still in possession of your genitalia. Over. <clears throat> That's a negative. Not going to say that. Over. What's he saying? Share with the class. He, uh, he said he sodomized your mother. The prick ate Mama's vanilla waffles at the captain's birthday party. Some nerve he's got. 
sure her vanilla waffles were the only thing he ate? Shut up, Chester. This isn't funny. This is my mom we're talking about. Tell him to apologize right now. <coughs> Sergeant Thorson requests that you apologize for the claims that you made about his mother. Over. Mac, he says uh, you shouldn't have antagonized the Firewalker in the first place. Who? Satellite officer V. Um, I'm afraid he might be referring to himself as Firewater, sir. Firewater? He's lost it. Fuck it, tell him to find his goddamn badge and gun. That's the only thing that matters. Satellite officer V. 10-4, affirmative. Officer is in pursuit of his firearm. Oh, God, I... Ah. Officer, do you need further assistance? Over. Uh, okay, 10-4, sir. I hear you. Relay your question. Over. Wait. Before you say anything stupid, think it through. You're going to be looking at a straitjacket if you tell everyone you lost your memory. Be smart about this. Ask if he's there alone. 10-4, sir. I'm not hearing your question. What? What is it? He's still on the line? He wants to verify the information on his badge. But of course, it says Dick Mullen, High General of the Revachonian Cavalry Force. Tell him to stop wasting time. What do you need, sir? Over. 10-9, repeat message. I didn't get that, sir. Over. What? What is it? What can- He seems intoxicated and keeps asking me to call him by his name. Mullen's drunk and emotionally aggressive. That's new. Wrap it up. Don't indulge in his drunken antics. That's a negative, sir. I got 10-12. Visitors present here. Over. 10. Um, excuse me, sir. Over. Uh, no, sir, I haven't. You're not really keen on mentioning your home life, so I've always assumed things weren't that good on that front. Over. 10-4. Well, that's, uh... Does he actually want something, or is he hell-bent on disrupting our work? He asked if he ever told me about his days before joining the RCN. For God's sake, cut this shit out! Tell him to stop wasting time and be a goddamn policeman for a change. Sir, Satellite Officer Wittmer says... So, um, was there anything else? Understood, sir. Over. Roger that. 10-10. Ten, ten. Over and out. A metallic drawer slides out from under the seat and clicks into place. The tools inside are neatly organized. Take what you need, officer. It's going to be a long case. I'm not protective of my tools, like some men are. The handles are long and sleek. Snap snap, go the cutters in your hand. You can do good work with these. Cut chains, locks and ropes, especially belts. It's robust, weatherproof and well made. Police issue, blue. Let's you see things in the dark you would otherwise miss. The pull-out toolbox slides back into its nest. Preheater gauge casts a warm glow on the steering levers and the radio on its hook. A metallic drawer slides. The pry bar feels nice and cold in your hand, heavier than you'd think. Useful for opening all sorts of doors and lids. The pull-out toolbox slides back into its nest. The white suede feels luxurious under the touch, and the metal clutch handle so very familiar in your palm. As you tap on the gauge, 
The indicator pin jerks as if startled. It's in the large orange sector, indicating the engine is warm. Next to the gauge is a red switch, labeled heat. There's no use pressing the heat button. It won't start without the ignition key. Translation. We're not going anywhere right now. Samaran street vendor surrounded by a motley assemblage of goods. When he realizes you're looking at him, his face breaks into a wide, welcoming grin. The name Sileng is embroidered over his breast pocket. Happy shopping, officer! Everything's cool here! Everything's cool! The goods are cool, the customers are cool, the place is cool. And one more thing, officer. You're very cool. Bang, 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 bang! Oh, yes! You got style. You got personal style. You know what you like. You like premium menswear. Look around and browse. Everything looks cool on a guy like you. Take your time. Start with a little compliment, then work your way up from there. This is about business, remember? Oh, okay. But why, officer? An investment? What kind of investment? I hear you, officer. What kind of a sum are we talking about here? Sounds like a fair deal all around. Corruption. You mean these delicious pre-packaged shelf-stable meal kits? Really easy to cook, no hassle, really cheap too. Buy some, try them out. No hassle. There's a little of a hassle here, it appears. A moral hassle. It is! Practically free. Yours for five cents a piece. Rock that tuna. Why not some macaroni too? No problem here, officer. I get all this from one of my suppliers. An extremely reputable guy. Oh, he's a good guy. I think you'd get along. I'll let you know the next time he's around. Interesting. Me? It's a boring story, officer. Who cares about the past? I'm all business now. All Revachol. This man probably comes from Seagai, sometimes known as the Apricot Suzerainty, an archipelago in the Samaran Isola. Apricot Suzerainty calls to mind an era when the Seagai archipelago was colonized by Revachol. It's a bit of a slur, in other words. Very cool. I admire your awareness of our intertwined histories. It's super nice of you to apologize for colonialism. But the apricot suzerainty is a shithole. That's why I left.
That's so cool, officer. Speaking of, why not support an independent local entrepreneur by buying some pants and glasses? Only the coolest goods in Revachal. I've got sneakers, speakers, extremely comfy pants too. Try them on right here. No shame, only freedom. Good joke, officer. <laughs> here we don't have permits. Just economic freedom. Take a look around. You glance around at the decrepit buildings, the miserable weather, the sidewalk strewn with sunflower seeds and a dust-choked air. It's beautiful. Beautiful freedom. It is, yes. Anyone can set up their shop whenever they feel like it. That's right. No permits, no bureaucracy. That's why this city and its law officials are so cool. If you wanted to be cynical about it, you could say we are here to protect the interests of property holders. I am not, however. My man, officer, you make all this possible. Without you, this climate would be extremely bad for business. You're part of the Gossamer State. Gossamer is a fine, filmy substance consisting of cobwebs spun by small spiders, seen especially in autumn. It's safe to say he's referring to the near absence of regulations. Yeah, that's the main thing about you. Freedom is great. It's what lets independent entrepreneurs like me sell quality goods at competitive prices. No need for discounts at ceilings, officer. 
Everything's already on sale. Anything you want, 50% off. But did he first mark them up 100% just so that he could put them on sale? My man, you know how the game is played. You and me, we should work together. What do you think? Shake things up? I'm an entrepreneur, officer. I've got sources, buyers, suppliers, distributors, manufacturers, wholesalers, all extremely cool and above board. Anything for you. There's a pile of cheap sunglasses in a small box. A variety of shapes and colors. You like sunglasses, officer? I've got the latest styles right here. Abort. These are hideous. What's more, they don't even fit your face. You can feel them pinching your nose and chafing against your brow. Damn, officer! You look like a mega secret spy! Very secret. They're practically made for you. I'll let you have them for two real and fifty cents. It's going to be very difficult for anyone to take you seriously with these things on your face. No, you are definitely not buying those. Are you sure? But they look so good on you! You should think this through, officer. These are all boring. Boring third-rate ho-hum sunglasses made of cheap Sirais plastic, the kind of plastic that melts in the sun. Those UV stickers are almost certainly just there for the show. If anything, these lenses probably direct more UV light into your pupils. A UV magnifier. These are all first-rate sunglasses. Premium design, super material, very cool, UV resistant. These will definitely keep your eyes safe and cool while doing your dangerous police work. Oh, very interesting choice, officer. Very high culture. This is how a sea monster sees the world. You've become a sea monster. Giant, hidden and strangely tender at heart. All is blue. All right, but these actually make your vision worse. It's like literally being underwater. Wow, officer, you look so cool. And they can be yours for a mere three real. My regular customers have passed them all up because they've got no taste. But you found them. The lieutenant tilts his head and steps back, eyes narrowed in a thorough examination. It's a case to him. You look like a musician, like a blind musician. But you could do worse. Take them if you want. There are clothes inside. Cheap second-hand clothes, smelling of strangers' body odors. Don't be shy. These are premium class clothes. Good quality fabrics, best retro design. Save the economy with your style, officer. Save the economy? That sounds off. Haven't you heard, officer? We've got to be economically conscious. Recycle your cash, keep it in circulation. Don't buy new things. Buy eco.
Very cool. The economy thanks you, officer. You find your hands deep in tattered and faded garments made from weird polyester blends that make your body itch and sweat in all the wrong places. The box smells like cat piss or like an old person with no money. Economical, but also trendy. Look first hand, buy second hand. Keep the economy moving. Something cold grazes your hand. Synthetic and sleek, a windbreaker. Surf, it says, but also wind, summer, 100% waterproof, and sport. All in different typefaces. Good choice, officer. Mega sporty. And it's only 450 for you, sir. Haven't you heard, officer? Look around, officer. You see all these premium goods just sitting there? Is this really the economy we want to leave to our children? I can't go extinct, officer. I've got kids to feed. Once an economy goes extinct, it messes up the whole ecosystem. You've got to think about the consequences. You see rows of toy soldiers guarding the rest of the trinkets displayed on the table. Some on horseback, others in rags, others yet in bright blue uniforms. All are stern and unyielding in their duty. Big men on big horses clad in lamella armor and carrying flintlocks, the kind that would mow down a line of enemy soldiers in the blink of an eye. Mm -hmm. I used to be very serious about my Franco-Nigerian night. They're not all blue. These figurines also wear gold coats and caps, complemented by orange trousers. They are variously posed, wielding swords and rifles with bayonets. Which one? Ah, royalist soldiers from the time of the revolution. The uniforms are painted a bit too brightly, I suppose. This set of soldiers isn't meant to look impressive. A few have rifles, but most of them carry pistols. Some even shovels and tall sticks. You're probably talking about the revolutionaries, yes? Yes, they are soldiers, revolutionary soldiers. I think their poverty has been exaggerated for effect. When you place them next to the royalists, it doesn't seem like they could possibly win. Maybe. Why? What's this? A headless man riding a horse. A headless man wearing futuristic tracksuit trousers that say foul. Oh, that's the headless foam rider. The headless foam rider. It's an urban legend. About a man who rides the streets of Revachol sporting a foam tracksuit. As you see, he's missing his head. Fifty cents. Bargain price. I'll throw in the tiny cap too. I think he's looking for it, or something. That part of the story has many interpretations. 
He lost his cap when he lost his head. Perhaps he's looking for the head. Did I mention that this figurine is supposed to be lucky? Always carry it with you. Boxes on the shelf look well loved and well traveled. Chipped, dented, they stare at you with the unblinking eyes of their tape reels. One especially catches your eye. Deep gold and amber plastic with a big old handle on top. A classic boom box that says Stereo 8 approved. Just make sure it works before you buy it. Is the Harman Walshi W2, made in Vespa, designed in Seoul, plays all reel-to-reel -reel formats, 2mm, 8mm, 12mm, it's even got a little radio in there, it'll set you back 12 real. Absolutely, I've tested each one myself with recordings of speech, found sounds and music from a variety of genres, even though... I don't really like music. That's odd. Why doesn't he like music? The stuff I record myself. Silverware shaking in drawers as motor cars race by. Nocturnal animals climbing on the roof. Airship rotors. That kind of thing. Hmm. Maybe you should ditch music as well. Get into these more experimental sounds he's describing. If police work means playing tapes, sure. You can use it for that. Or any other time you'd need to play a tape. A typical Martinez streetlight sits among assorted floor and table lamps. The light pole has been carefully cut, and the wiring has been redone and attached to a standard indoor plug. The light buzzes faintly, but persistently. This would make quite a statement in your living room. Yes, officer. As you see, it's in perfect working order. His manner is casual, but his speech is careful, measured. He wants you to know that he has nothing to hide. It was brought to me to be altered. We are not here to investigate the theft of city property. You have to admit it's rather clever what he's done with it. 700 real. A bargain, I dare say. There's also the matter of rewiring. But the most important transformation is the light's placement among ordinary indoor fixtures, which has adjusted its morphological field. The light became suitable for use inside the home just a few days ago. It's not often that I see officers from the RCM in my pawn shop. What can I do for you? I haven't had any problems myself, though some of my customers have complained about inconsistent law enforcement. Who are your customers, usually? All kinds of people come through here. Locals, travelers, people looking for a deal, people looking for a keepsake. People who are terminally bored. As you can see, I have a wide selection of goods for everyone to choose from. It keeps me entertained. He's well composed, but underneath it you sense 
psychedelic processes, bubbling. Some kind of drug, maybe. Feeling warm and enthralled by the movement of light, while the mind continues to race forward. Lucky bastard, he's probably on Parolido. It's tough to come by on the street. A drug developed by the military to treat and prevent radiation sickness. It has psychedelic side effects, and it makes your eyes turn yellow. I try to keep the shop at a comfortable temperature. I've had to take it, you know, since the people's pile cleaner. I was with the emergency relief brigade. He's taken it for mental and emotional, not physical pain these days. A bad idea. Some poor leftist built a particle decay generator in hopes of bringing affordable electricity to underserved communities. It malfunctioned. Radioactive waste everywhere. Probably some of it in you too. The People's Pile was a Type U particle decay generator that failed immediately after entering service, releasing radioactive waste into River Esperance. A primitive nuclear reactor also called a pile. A primitive nuclear reactor. Construction began during the Commune of Revachon. The people continued work on it after the Commune fell. They wanted a cheap source of energy for Revachon West. Needless to say, things didn't work out. An emergency valve defect resulted in steam pressure blowing the turbine taking the fuel containment vessel up in the explosion. Both the faulty design and lack of finances contributed to the catastrophe. We were an all-volunteer force, self-organized, tried to help the fire brigades contain the spill. On the patch, gamma radiation lines crossed with a red drop of blood. I lived by the river since I was a small boy. The Esperance. Didn't have the art to let it all go to shit without trying to do something to help out. There wasn't much the volunteer force could do, however. We wasted years in the river mud. Years getting sick. There's a reason why everyone's tried to forget any of it ever happened. And why no one has tried to repair or replace the pile. So much disappointment. An early death. Cancer, mostly. And we knew all that was coming even as we were cleaning up as best we could. No one's. Everyone's. A bunch of poor people built themselves a primitive nuclear reactor, hoping for the best. What do you think is going to happen? The cleanup happened 15 years ago. I was young then. Later, my second aunt died. Left me this shack and all the assorted junk in it. So I came to Martinez. People told me don't go there. It's a shithole. I said, people, we just had a nuclear pile meltdown. I'm going to get as far away from Forberg as I can. Still in the same city, but... I like the theory more than the story. Outward movement, not vortices. Yeah, you gotta get in on those vortices, my man. You said you'd done it before, yeah? The lieutenant steps away, pretending to admire some of the knickknacks on display. Looks like he doesn't want to get involved. He won't be your knock. But he won't be thrilled about this either. Here you go, man. Of course. Mm -hmm. 
I doubt it, but I can try and answer any questions you may have. I do my best to keep my distance from all manner of butchery. Bad for business. Bad for everyone. He doesn't know anything. The pawnbroker's gaze is already fixed on the dancing colors. Someone else came here earlier today asking the same question. I promptly sold her the gun you pawned a couple days back. Despair creeps into you, getting fat on your weakness. Whatever noble intentions you once had as a police officer, it's eating them all up now. You're still coming up with sentences. That's a step up from total annihilation, right? Yes, it can be difficult to be on the receiving end of so much distrust and outright hatred. Nothing you can say would make you feel any better now. Cop gives up the detective genre for social realism. Another police officer resigned from the RCM following a nervous breakdown. He now lives under a bridge, drinking and occasionally throwing excrement at passers-by, shouting, I never loved that woman. When asked to comment, former colleagues objected to the theory that his psychological disintegration was precipitated by his wife leaving him. It's because the furrows lost that match said Captain Ptolemy Price, once the man's superior officer. It's because he couldn't get a big gun from acquisitions and, anyway, police work really burns you out after a while. Satellite officer Jean Vitmer, the deranged former cop's partner, commented. Sergeant Mac Torson, another former colleague, did not propose any theories, merely saying, whatever happened to him wasn't about birds. He got fucked, that's all.